Okay, this final part is a little bit challenging because we're going to add some software functionality to ArcMap, and it's a toolbox that was produced by uh, Evan Toms at the U.S. Geological Survey and then modified a bit by Dr. DiMaggio from Penn State. And so we're going to have to add it each time we go, but it, it uh, can work and, and may be quite nice for us. Let's move this layout uh, zoom and navigation toolbar out of the way. And let's click on the tool arc toolbox. Just bring this to the foreground. And this is another floating tool. You can kind of resize it to make it so it's not too much. But if you just right click in open space on the toolbox, uh, little window there you could say add toolbox and so we want to make sure we go to our to the folder we've uncompressed and zoom in and then go into downloads and then just drill down it's a few levels down so cross-section master cross-section master cross-section tbx and you see this cross-section tools 10.2 so just say okay and it adds it and it won't stay so if you quit and you launch ARC again, you have to add it again. But it's it uh, seems to work OK. So one of the other things we're going to want to do each time is we're going to have to make sure that you see how this is black up here. That means that particular geologic map uh, layout is activated. And we're going to want to do that. So just every now and then double as we go through this, make sure the geologic map layout is activated and then turn on the cross-section line and so you see the cross-section line is down here which might actually be okay for you once you get all of your data in but for our example we need it to cross where there is some um, something to to edit or to you know make a cross-section from so we're going to move it and so what I need to do is start editing and I'm going to click on the X section A and say OK and let's see can I get it so we had just like before we may have to make that layer be the only one that we're able to select from and now I can uh, double click on it and I'm just going to move it the ends up to my area some more interesting and I'll click like that and and so you would want to do something similar you can move it around but then the key thing is once you're done moving it go you need to stop editing so save your edits because it turns out if the edits on it causes a problem for that cross-section toolbox so then we want to go down so let's just double click on the actually let's open this up so we're just going to do the first of the three possible things to do which is create the segmented surface profile it turns out you can experiment with the other ones but I found that uh, it's quite difficult and often it causes crashing but the first one is does the most important it should create the topographic profile for us and it'll color code it by what units it's going through and that saves us a ton of time and then we'll do the rest manually so double click on this and then just make sure you do everything as we say uh, you know as is shown here as best you can so cross section line layer is going to be the X section A the DEM layer, make sure you choose the right thing. It's this one down here, the DSM, not the, the shade. Start measuring lines from the southwest. Let's start from the left, from A. And then the geology polygon layer, we know, is the mapping unit polys. We don't want any vertical exaggeration. And um, we want to uh, export this into uh, just right here and you can call this sometimes we say uh, C CSA so it's like cross-section uh, seg line so it's like cross-section seg line 
and let's try it if you have to do this again just give it another name like two so say OK and then add to the data frame so we want to add this to the cross-section layer so make sure you almost screen cap this hopefully it's gonna work So ready, go. So you can see it's running the script. Sometimes on a on a complicated cross section, you can it can take quite a bit of time and it can crash your computer. So that's why we we have to be careful. This is done on a pretty fast computer, so it hopefully will be okay. Okay, so when we do that, we actually can see the segmented view of the cross sections is really good and the only thing is we have the wrong colors here and that's because this has the old map unit colors so if you just go through you can double click on them like the QG is this orange one it looks like it's uh, electron gold the QA is still the same as the yellow the Escabrosa should be what uh, kind of a peacock blue so you can they don't all have to be exactly the same you can play around a little bit with this the Martin is the purple that's still that way the diabase is an important one to change we used to use pink so now it's this dark gray I use 80% gray uh, the Troy is uh, this nice green that looks pretty good the Apache Basalt is red, that's correct. The Mescal is, a, we know, is that grass green, so you should choose a bright green, like a Quetzal green, maybe. And then the Dripping Springs is important. This is a dark blue, should do like an indigo blue, maybe this dark navy. And the Pioneer is still brown, that's fine. And then the mess the uh, Madeira is white, so just make it white. It's a little bit hard to see. You see it there, so that's a little bit annoying, but it's it just uh, the way it goes. So, but now uh, one thing you want to do is look up here at this toolbar. This is the layout toolbar, so it lets us zoom around in the layout. Don't confuse this magnifying glass with this one. So the left mag magnifying glass zooms in on the map, and we don't want to do that right now. We want to use this magnifying glass to zoom in on the layout, and so we can look at our our profile. So you see what's really nice is we see where the contacts are between the different units. So this will save you a ton of time. You don't have to measure. But instead of using the additional pieces of the Arc Toolbox, I recommend simply printing this out and finishing it or you could put it you could export it as a graphic and put it into a drawing program if you know how to use something like Adobe Illustrator you can draw your cross-section adding uh, the the line work or you can uh, you could put it in PowerPoint and do it but I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna print it out on a piece of paper and show you uh, maybe the the way I would think is the best way to do it. So if you click on this button, we zoom back out. Okay, so I'm just going to go to print. In this case, I'm going to try to print this on my printer here at home, which is an HP 3050, which hopefully is going to be installed right here. And I'll just let it come print out. It's, you know, this... It, it's not a fancy printer, but I'm just going to go ahead and it'll print out in a few pages so you could play around with this. The other thing you can do if that doesn't work is go ahead and, as we did before, export this to the desktop. But this time we have more material including the cross section. So here's the cross section or the whole thing um, in, as a PDF. Okay, so now we got the printout. This is just from my printer and I see uh, you know I got the one map page 
and then the cross section page. I got some other ones that are it's not much in them, just a little stuff at the top there. But the most important thing is is the cross section page because this now I can just work on directly and comparing with the the map with its cross section line. Okay, so I'm looking at the really pretty map with its cross section. I can see I'm going to go through the alluvium to colluvium and then we have a little bit of that Madeira underneath with the Pioneer back to alluvium and then into that Pioneer Dripping Springs contact and onward. So I won't do everything but I'll just show you what I did to get started and this is again what I'm trying to say is so exciting I think because it gets all the hard work done by putting those contact locations on for you by where the color transitions are. So all I've done is I just, I gone ahead and drew in what's going to be the alluvium here and then the colluvium. And then we have the, the diabase down in here. And then this is going to be pioneer, a big thick piece of pioneer, which we know is quite steeply dipping. And then here will be the dripping springs and so on. So I'm not going to show everything because I want you to have the pleasure of making your, your cross section. But I think the beauty of this tool is it lets you, it does all the hard work and then you just have the, the fun of drawing the cross section. So I hope this will work for you. You can do it manually like this by hand, but you could also try it in a drawing program. And of course you can do it the old fashioned way, but this is the best in my opinion and will be actually quite efficient for you.